Hello everyone and welcome to this new tutorial of Plexus. Today we're gonna talk about the uplift pressure in an earth dam. But before I start, if you're new to this YouTube channel, if you can please subscribe and like the videos. So today we're gonna talk about gravity dams and the uplift pressure on the gravity dam. But before I start, I need to have a general view of the types of dams. So we have commonly three types of dams. The arch dam, which transfer the load from uh, the load of the water in his arch shape. It transform this load into compression and take them to the sides of the dam. There's the buttress dam, which is a combination of the gravity dam and the arch dam which uh, transfer the pressure of the water by his own gravity and by these supports here and there's the most commonly used dam which is the gravity dam that makes an equilibrium between the water load and his own uh, and his own uh, weight so usually since this here is a small section on the arch dam and this here also is a small section the uplift water is not as bad as in this big section here so here we have a big uplift pressure so today we're gonna calculate the uplift pressure in plexus and see its effect when adding a screen we can add here a screen to reduce this uplift pressure so let's start Concrete dam with confined groundwater flow. This document verifies that groundwater flow principles are correctly implemented in Plexus. Three concrete dams with different underground configuration are considered. One without impermeable screen and one with impermeable screen at the upstream side and one with impermeable screen at downstream side. Used version, we're gonna use Plexus 3D. I've already made this tutorial with Plexus 2D. Geometry, the dams are founded on an in previous isotropic soil. Seepage flow is modeled for all three cases and the results are compared to the ones obtained from the flow net method, which is an, a analytical method. The entity obtained streamlines and equipotential are presented in figure one to three. Total discharge under the dams and water pressure head at point A, though of them refer to figure 1 and 3, are selected to be validation to the validation criteria. The concrete dams are simulated by non-porous material. This is a really important point. Since the dams are made of concrete, there are a non-porous material, which means they do not uh, per permit the water to go through them. Rarely, Concrete dams have cracks in them, which may permit the water to enter them. But we're gonna take them here into consideration as non-porous material. And their embedded depth is equal to 1.5 meter. This is for the Plexus 2D, we're not gonna do this. And Plexus 3D, the concrete dam have the same geometry as above. Their width in Y direction is equal to 1 meter. The impermeable screen are modeled with two surfaces in which a positive or negative interface is assigned. The resulting geometry is represented in figure 5. The groundwater flow boundary condition for the selected dam configuration are given in table 1. These are here the ground flow, the groundwater flow boundary condition. So of course the bottom is closed. The top is seepage, the upstream and the downstream are seepage, and the sides are closed. What do this mean? It means that the bottom of the dam will be set to closed. The top will permit the water to go through it. The upstream and the downstream will be seepage and the sides closed. What does this mean here? That the water cannot go through the earth and get down from here because 
in Plexus, it takes into consideration what we put in it as input. So we should put here that it's closed and the water cannot go through and also here closed and this side closed. What we can only do, which is, the, uh, which is what's supposed to be, is put this here as seepage and this here as seepage. And the difference in the water level will create a pressure from here to here, which will permit the water to go through the earth till this part here. The adopted material parameters are we take into consideration the soil as linear elastic drained we put these values here the dam non-porous and this value also here why do we take this value which is one kilo newton per, per square meter because we are only doing a flow analysis in this exercise and we're not doing a stress analysis what means is that the weight of the dam, his, uh, physical met uh, his physical properties do not matter because we're only taking into consideration the water flow. What will matter is uh, the seepage of the ground only and also what material are we using, for example, if it's a non-porous or a porous material. In both Plexus 2D and 3D models, the fine option is selected for the elements distribution. The two geometry line surfaces which represent the impermeable screen are refined with a coarseness factor of 0 0.1 to reduce the number of generated finite element. A coarseness factor is equal to 1 is used everywhere. The resulting mesh is shown in figure 6 and figure 7. Calculations are performed using the flow only mode with steady state groundwater flow as the pore pressure calculation type. The bottom groundwater flow boundary is set to close in both plexus 2D and 3D. In addition, both groundwater flow boundaries in the Y are set to closed. This is the dam here. As we can see, the water on this level creates a pressure here in the ground. Why? Because the water has a tendency to take the same level, which means if this part was filled as this part, we will not have seepage of water from here to here. But since here the level of the water is six meters lower, the water has a tendency to follow these lines and to go from this side to this side. Now the other line, which are the equipotential line, is wherever you put a tube from this part till here, get the same water height. From here to here, the same water height. If you put a tube here, 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 regardless where in this part, you get the same water height on this tube. Here also, here also. These are the figure used. So now let's check the model. This is the soil modeled, the dam. You can see it's non-porous, linear elastic. General properties, you don't need them. The parameters, you only put it one to avoid any issue in calculation, any errors. The interface, the groundwater is what we need, but not in this dam since it's non-porous. We can go to soil and check now here. The groundwater we put here the same parameters but the difference is in the groundwater as you can see first of all there's a lot of model that can be used for the water pressure there's the standards there there's, there's the USDA so there's a lot of models that you can use for here we use the user defined model and we've put the seepage parameter We've made the borehole, we've designed, we've put all the soil in a one meter and Y direction. Then here what we've done is we've drawn these two surfaces. And we've created a interface on both sides so they can be uh, impermeable. And here this part is a volume, we've created the volume and assigned to it the material of the dam. Then we went on to create a mesh. 
Now we're gonna check the mesh that we've created. This is the mesh. As you can see, the coarseness on this two on these two sheets. Now what are we passing from this side to this side? I'm gonna close this. Also close this. Flow condition. Now as we can see, this here is set to seepage. So here this is the water level, we took it from here to this part, then to get here to zero, and we've put it on the same level here. This is the stage construction. The first part is where we only have the dam without any uh, permeable screen. This is the first impermeable screen, and this is the second one here. So now we're gonna go and check the results. We're gonna ch check these results here. Okay, so here we can see the water pressure. Now here it's constant and here it's a triangular shape. You can see also the coarseness of the mesh. First of all, we're gonna go and check the stress. As you see, there's no stress because as mentioned earlier, we do not have stress here. You can go and check any stress, you'll get no values. Because what we're doing here is a flow only calculation. You can see here flow only, steady state groundwater flow. Flow only, steady state, steady state. If we used, for example, the K0 procedure, field stress, gravity loading, we would have obtained the stress and the dam. As mentioned, there's no stress here. There's also no deformation. Here's the deformed mesh. You can see no deformation, total displacement. There's no total displacement. Because we have not assigned any properties to this dam or even uh, any calculation, we only made flow only calculation. So now we can go to uh, pore pressure and check the underwater, the groundwater head. Now what I will do is create a section. First section I'll use x equals 0, y equals 0, second one y equals 0, x equals one zero zero there's a problem that the intersection does not with the slide elements okay 0 
0.5. Now we have the proper section. We can check here the groundwater head. So here, for example, at this part, at this part here, if you put any water tube, you will get the height of six meters in all of this part. All of this part the same. All of this part the same. This is the active water pressure. You can also see them in here. Here the water is minus 60 since it's 6 meter high. Here it's 0 since there's no water level. It goes from minus 60 till 0. Here you can see it's minus 60, here it's 0. This is the groundwater flow. We can see the groundwater flow from this side to this side. It goes from this to this. Now let's check if we put the first water screen, which is this one. You can see how water goes from here to here and then goes to here. Here we create the big stress point. That's the most dangerous point and the impermeable screen. And if we choose the second option, you see that the water also creates a stress point. But now, what's important to us is to check the groundwater heads. This is with no screen at all. This one is with an impermeable screen on the back, and this is with an impermeable screen on the front. As we can see here, it's 5 meter, the water head. Here it's almost 1. This is the screen in the front. If you put the screen in the back, we can see that here it's reduced to 4, which is almost 30% to 40% less. So what we can conclude is that if we put a impermeable screen at the front of the dam, it does not help us at all. What matter is the impermeable screen at the back of the dam. Because as you can see in the initial phase, here it was 5, here it was 1. Now like this, it's also the same. Here it's 5, here it's also 1. So nothing has changed for the uplift pressure. If we take the second phase, which is the screen here, we can see that here it's 5, here it went down to 4, here it went down to almost 0. That's why we can conclude that putting a screen here is very important. And here we can see the water flow, which goes from the higher level to the lower level. This is it for this tutorial. If you like this video, please subscribe and like this uh, and comment on this video. See you in the next tutorial.